Hey guys, what is up? It's Shadowlands back with a very spontaneous review. I wanted to get this M16A4 and M16A4 Firebug. I keep calling it Firefly, but it's Firebug review out as fast as possible. I'm not the first one to get a review out, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, beat me to it. Uh, Y4, Y4, the guy that gave me a shout out. So props to him for getting that out fast enough, but I want to give you an in-depth review, not just a gameplay. This review is a little bit extended because I'm both covering two weapons and because it's brand fucking new and everyone wants to see a brand new fucking weapon. I think Nexon has made a very smart move releasing this gun. It is a very cool gun. Love it to death. Um, I don't love the GP1 quite as much, but I'm going to go over stats for both of them first. The Firebug has a damage of 40, portability of 65, rate of fire of 75, accuracy of 87, recoil of 64, and a basic ammo count 30 of 90. Magazines, scopes, and muzzles can all be attached. Muzzles, silencers, same thing. Uh, right now it's on sale for 20 bucks. so if you get it in the couple, next couple of days that I'm re uh, releasing this review, 20 bucks, really nice. 90 days it's on 10 bucks, so that's really nice too. The regular one has a damage of 39, so one point lower. Portability of 57, which is quite a bit lower, that's 8 points lower. The rate of fire of 74 is one point lower. The accuracy is also one point lower from 87 to 86. The recoil is one point higher from uh, 64 to 65. The ammo count is the same and it can also take scopes, magazines, and suppressors. Uh, it is a GP gun that is available at a relatively low rank of Master Sergeant 4, so you should get access to the gun very early in the game. However, if I do remember correctly, it was released at a much higher rank somewhere around Colonel in the uh, Nexon Korea version, I think is what it was. Uh, I saw the rank in the video that they released that uh, UCD put out, and uh, it looked like he was a higher rank. So, I mean, maybe it was released at that rank, maybe not. Maybe that was just my imagination. But either way, it's not nearly as good of a gun. Uh, for 7 days it's 5,000 GP, so it is not the cheapest or the most expensive r assault rifle in the world. It should be available to most people at some point with no real um, financial issues, I could say. I mean, I don't really like saying that when I'm not talking about NX, but whatever, financial issues with GP. As far as the guns themselves, I'm pretty sure they're going to both get nerfed at some point, because right now they're both really, really good. I mean, in general, obviously I prefer the Firebug just for the general aesthetics. Both of them have the same recoil pattern as of right now, and they perform, pr uh, perform pretty much the same way with the same scopes. The recoil isn't really super noticeable, it's pretty much the same on both. It's slightly lower, just barely noticeably, on the uh, Firebug. The reload is noticeably faster on the Firebug, though. In fact, uh, somewhere when I'm running around up here on the roof, I go out of my way to stop and reload a couple of times to show you that it's there. I might have actually already done it by the time I get to this point in the video. But um, you'll see me reload both guns quite a bit. I use both pretty equally, maybe a little more lean towards the Firebug, but in general, they are both fantastic weapons. Uh, the portability of 65 is just a little bit below average of 66, so I mean, it's really right there. The rate of fire of 75 is above average by a fair amount, which is usually 74, which is what we've been seeing on most assault rifles getting released recently. The highest available, I do believe, is a 77 or 78 available on the M416 CQB or the M4A1 SAW mod, which I know can get up to a 77. I think there might be one that can get to a 78, but I'm not 100% sure of that. So the rate of fire, for all we know, is 75, which is above average, which is fantastic. The ammo count is the same, nothing really special there. The overall reload rate is just above average. The regular M16A4 is directly on average. The firebug is slightly faster. The recoil of 64 is statistically quite low. It's below the 66-67 mark. The AK-47 family typically goes to 68-69. I think there are a couple that are 66 or 67, such as the AK-103 family. But it is a relatively low recoil, which is really nice. The accuracy of 87 is very high. That's really nice. It makes very easy tap firing. However, this gun's uh, both variants actually really do seem to jam a little bit. I think that might be a fire rate problem, and that definitely seems like a bug that is going to be fixed. Just how Nexon fixed the uh, Nemexis F2000 reload rate relatively recently. So I mean, that was a few months ago, but I consider that recent. So I think that is a bug that will be fixed. But as far as right now, the gun looks awesome. The reload is cool. It looks like a gun straight out of Call of Duty. The running animation is amazing. I love the draw. Uh, it's the same on both weapons. I do believe the running animo animation is the same also. So, I mean, really just a couple of awesome guns. I highly suggest checking them out. Do I suggest getting the Firebug for Perm? Absolutely. It is a fun gun. I think I'm going to rate it an 8.5 of 10. The only real downfalls right now are the jamming, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be fixed. The damage of 40 is relatively low, although the damage drop-off is pretty good, although I'm pretty sure that's going to get nerfed at some point. So I can't give it the highest rating in the world. If it wasn't for the damage, then I'm pretty sure I would rate this a 9.5 or 10 of 10. It is a fantastic weapon, it really is. But I'm expecting a nerf relatively soon, and the damage stat by default is pretty low. So there's not a whole lot to really, really go with here. This is basically, if I had to describe it, a skilled version of the M416 and M4A1 families. It has a little more recoil, but it typically does a little more damage at a range, despite the fact that the other guns do have a higher damage. This has less damage drop-off. It is noticeable on both variants, the GP and the NX variant, um, than the other variants of the uh, 
M4A1 and M416 family, so it's definitely noticeable. That's not really anything else. Both variants do have burst and auto, and actually the burst mode is quite useful because if you're in scope, the three shots literally just go right there. If you guys have got the Second Amendment recently, you should notice that the third bullet does typically go off to the uh, diagonal a little bit on one of them usually. It doesn't always, but it sometimes does. This gun consistently just goes straight up. Both of them do. And I think that's awesome. That means the burst mode is useful both inside and outside of scope. It makes tap firing at a range super, super useful, especially if you, for some reason, forgot to put a scope on your gun or just don't like using scopes. I don't really know why people don't like using scopes. But just in general, uh, yeah, as far as the recommended setup, uh, you really don't need an extended magazine. Uh, the reload rate's relatively quick, though, so, I mean, if you want to put an extended magazine 1 on it, be my guest. It's not really going to hurt you in any way, shape, or form. As far as scopes, I do suggest an iTech scope. Uh, an ACOG scope would be fine for this. But part of the reason that I stray towards the firebug a little more in this episode is because of the scope, not because of the gun's stats, or because of the gun's performance. I do prefer the reflex scope on this kind of gun. It makes usage just that much easier. So if you put the iTech scope on it, I think you'll find the same thing. Um, I will do another video on the on the new update and stuff. There's a lot to talk about. Just as my quick insights to it, um, as far as the new VIP mode, I really haven't had a huge chance to explore it yet, but it seems kind of cool. It's unique. It seems like a cross between Desert Thunder and uh, Elam Pro. That's what it, yeah, maybe S and D a little bit in there because you have an objective. So I'd say a cross between S and D and Desert Thunder. It's certainly an innovative mode, and we haven't seen it in many games, but it is definitely a really cool and fun mode to try out. I probably will do a couple of videos on it, but I am on my bad laptop right now, so those may need to wait a little bit. Um, but as far as other stuff, these are really nice guns. The new mode is really cool. The new NX uh, rare weapons look fantastic. Can't wait to try the PP9, uh, the PP2000. And I will also be doing a video soon on me renewing my Andromalius. I do want to get that out because I now that they were, now that they are selling these uh, renewal kits again, I want to buy some of those and do some of that. So looking forward to that. As far as what my life has been like recently, just very hectic. I have had so much work recently, it's been absolutely out the ears. I have been developing video games. I'm actually writing some right now with some friends, and it is just crazy. Uh, we have to pop out a video game every two to three days, which is absolutely insane. So that's my schedule for right now, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe. Use this gun at a medium range, and I will see you guys in the next video. Check out Facebook at TeamSpeak, and I will see you guys in the next video. Shadowlance out.